Electromagnetic wavelengths shrink in materials where the material properties are not equal to those of free space. You can see that here in Table 7-1. The wavelength depends on the phase velocity of the material, and in good conductors, as UP is a phase velocity, and in good conductors, which is the regime we're interested in, the phase velocity, UP, of the material changes according to the conductivity, sigma of the material, as well as the frequency of the wave. For example, at 10 kilohertz, for a ground conductivity of 1 e to the minus 2 Siemens per meter, the wavelength in the ground shrinks to about 316 meters, meaning we would need a grid resolution, delta, to be about 31.6 meters if we're going to model uh, 10 cells per wavelength. This is a lot smaller than the 650 meter resolution we're currently using. On top of this, electromagnetic waves attenuate exponentially in good conductors. So if this is the surface of the ground, and we have this good conductor ground, the waves are going to decay exponentially. You know, if this is the amplitude at the Earth's surface, then the amplitude of the wave is going to decay as we go deeper into the ground. The skin depth of the ground, or the depth at which the amplitude of the wave decays to about 37%, is just 50 meters for uh, this particular ground that we're considering. And the skin depth is 1 over alpha. You can see alpha on the table on the previous slide for a good conductor. This means that in order to accurately account for the ground and the skin depth, we need to choose a grid resolution that will allow us to resolve this exponential decay. If our resolution is too coarse, the ground may behave like a PEC in our model. The ground will look like a PEC if the wave attenuates faster or over a shorter distance than the size of a grid cell. Typically, in order to adequately resolve this exponential decay of the fields in the ground, we need at least three grid cells per skin depth. So since the skin depth is around 50 meters, now the required grid resolution that we need in the ground, delta, is about 17 meters. Then how deep into the ground do we need to model? Luckily, here is where the skin depth gives us an advantage. If the wave attenuates exponentially, then once the wave amplitude decays to near zero, there is no benefit to modeling deeper into the ground. So maybe if we model to a depth of, say, um, 1.5 skin depths, then the round trip propagation, so here would be the PEC, this is the ground, the lower part of our model, so the round trip propagation path would be three skin depths. And the fields by then, by the time they reach back up here to the surface, they will have decayed to about 95% of their amplitude that they originally had at the Earth's surface. Unfortunately, so far, we've only considered the ground. Since the ocean is an even better conductor, the required grid resolution is going to be even higher if we consider the reduced wavelength and the skin depth in, of VLF waves in the ocean. So what can we do? It seems computationally infeasible for us to uniformly model the Earth ionosphere waveguide at a grid resolution of just 17 meters or so using the types of computers we have access to. At least that's when we're modeling the ground. Here for the ocean, it'd be even a finer resolution. For example, at 17 meter resolution, if we model, want to model from the ground to the ionosphere, uh, we would need 4,500 grid cells just to extend one column between the ground and the ionosphere. Uh, and that's assuming that this goes up to 78 kilometers. So what can we do instead? 
Unfortunately, this is one of the drawbacks of FDTD. There's not a lot of flexibility in choosing the grid arrangement. In FDTD grids, typically all the cells have the same size and shape. They don't all have to be squares or cubes. We can have hexagons, for example, or other or tet tetrahedrals in 3D, but all the cells do typically have about the same size and shape in an FDTD model. Now it's possible to create a subgrid where in some region of the grid perhaps you want to have a higher resolution of grid cells. But these often have stability problems or accuracy problems. So this is if we're using a subgrid. At the end of this class we will discuss the finite element method, FEM. FEM also solves Maxwell's equations, but it solves Maxwell's equations in the frequency domain. One of the main advantages of FEM is that all the grid cells in the model can easily be of different sizes and shapes. For example, we might have triangles, and then we might have, you know, different, different size triangles over some region. Okay, well, right now we have an FDTD grid, so let's figure out how to deal with the finite conductivity of the ground and the oceans. If it's computationally infeasible to model into the ground, is there a way we can approximate the fields at the surface of the ground without having to model into it? 